It's subtle, but this is one of the handiest features I include in all of my Power Apps. It's a little toggle feature that allows me to hide or show visual elements on the screen for either myself or other users that I specify. So sometimes there are visual elements on the screen that you only want to show up for either you as the developer or perhaps application administrators or people that are helping you debug and test the application. In this case, there needs to be a way to turn this on and off. This has saved me so much time and headaches in building my applications and Power Apps. There are even times when I develop an application where I have buttons stacked on top of each other and I use this toggle feature that I'm talking about and based on that toggle Boolean variable, things shift around so I can see everything. I've actually had one of my users <laughs> from one of my applications I built for him. He's a, one of the app admins. He says it feels like it's one of his superpowers while using the application. And it's true, it does give him a special access to do some really cool things. Let me show you exactly what I mean by all this and show you how to implement it in your applications. If you're building your own application template, definitely want this feature there. Stick around to the end and we'll get this squared away. If a user isn't experiencing a bug or a problem that you're not able to replicate on your end as the developer, you could drop labels or any type of control that will reveal more information. So they, as a tester, they can turn this on and let's say this label would hold the current records ID. Maybe you don't display the current records ID on the screen anywhere, but you put in this label and you have it set so that if I click on this label here and I go down to visible, you notice it says far show debugging. So that is a Boolean value that says whether or not it's going to show show or hide itself. Okay. And sometimes there are just some things on here that you want to use while you're developing an application. You never want a user to see it. It's just for you to help you develop the application. For example, if I were to add a new rectangle over here and I were to make this rectangle a 20 by 20 square and copy this over the place and use it as a guideline to make sure all my controls are at least 20 pixels away from the edge of the screen. You could do that and then keep it there, but the users don't need to see it. Bar show debugging. There you go. We can zoom out here and a normal user, they're not going to see the debugging thing and it's not going to be turned on. So they're not going to see it, but it's always there. You could always turn it on while you're actually developing the application is going to help you out. So let's implement this debugging feature within our application template. Let's go into the app. For now, I'm going to take this code out. We had that commented. We're just going to take that out because we have this variable. Very good. Now let's create a new variable here and we'll call it set GBL show debugging. That's what we'll call it. And by default, you want this to be false. And what that does is even if you're a tester, you're going to come into the application. You're not going to want to see all these little extra values all over the place. You want to see it as a normal user would. Then if they're having a problem or if you want to see more details, you can click on a toggle that's on every single screen and you can click on it and it will actually turn this on. So that's how this variable will be used. Now what we'll do is let's add a new icon. Me personally, I don't like it to look like anything else. I want it to look obvious and weird. So if you do see it, you know exactly what it is. It's not going to be confused with a, a customer or a car or anything like that. So uh, I think the icon that I use is this 3D printing one. Let me go and use that. Unless that icon means something to your, your users, you might want to use something completely different. We might want to put that little icon up here out of the way. Now, what I like to do is set up some values that will be used throughout the whole application in which you can customize this icon. And we can throw those into our global uh, variable. Okay, so right now, if you look at the X and the Y, I'm going to write this down or type this down into my notepad plus plus 556 is the X and the Y right now is set to 46. And, um, you know, we could actually set this up to be, I know it's icon, actually click on icon here. Yeah, it's icon 3D printing. So I'm going to copy and paste that and we'll make that a part of our, our global variable here. So we can go back over here before we mess too much with that icon. Um, so we can add some more variables to our global app settings and we'll say debug icon X. We'll set that up to be 556 debug icon Y. 
set that up to be 46. And we need a comma at the end, of course. Debug icon. And that should be icon dot 3D. I'm sorry, it's printing. Printing 3D. And that's what we'll do. All right. So I'm going to run on start to make sure those values are in there. So we'll go to the X. We'll say GBL app settings dot debug icon X. We'll go over to Y. I'm going to paste that there and substitute out the X for Y. Okay. Um, so it shouldn't have changed or anything, but if we ever change that in the global settings, it will um, move that. Okay, now for the icon. Let's make this dynamic as well. Debug icon. There we go. Now the color, I'd like that to be, you know what, let's, I'm going to cut this icon. Do a control X. I'm going to go over to our create theme because we've got our uh, color values here. I'm going to paste it here. And you see our X and Y is still preserved in our icons. So that's good. I want to look at these values here. So up here we've got um, this dark purple color. I think I'd like to use the secondary dark and just see what it looks like. GBL theme, very dark. You know what I think I'd rather do is I would like to use that primary dark and I'd like to do a color fade on it. I think that would look nicer. So let's do a 10% fade on it. I like that. So it's, it's uh, fairly subtle. We might want to go with like a 6%. Um, although you might get something, depending on people's screens and people's vision, you might want to keep that at 10 or 15, just to make sure they're going to be able to see it. Okay. Whenever a tester clicks on this icon, you want to reverse. So we'll do a set. G, GBL, show debugging. We're going to set that to be the opposite of what's in there. So right now it's set to false. Now if I hold down Alt and click on it, now it's true. We can add over a label here that will display that. GBL show debugging. Okay, it's true. I'm going to hit run. I'm going to click on this icon. See it toggles back and forth. Isn't that nice? All right, so whenever it is on, I like it to light up and be really obvious that it's on. So we'll go over to color. Let's open this up. We'll do an if, global show debugging. If that's true, let's use GBL theme, secondary light. I want to use that green, that neon green color. Okay, I'm going to hit format text, make it look all clean. And look at that. It's nice and obvious. <laughs> okay. Now, I think I would like to make this a little smaller. So instead of 64, I'd like to be maybe 48, okay? And I'll make a copy of that. And for this, I'm gonna like move it down a little bit. I'm gonna cut that. Now, you just saw me manually move the icon, which would have messed up the X and the Y, right? I wanna manually move it and get the X and the Y. So instead of 556, five, I want 583. Instead of 46, I want 66. Okay. Now I'm going to delete that one. I'm going to go into the settings here. Instead of 556, five, 583. Five, and this will be 66. I mean, we could set up all kinds of settings for that little debug. We could set the width and the height if we wanted to. I've just never needed uh, to change it that much. I have had the need to change the X and the Y. So I like to include that. We need to run the app on start for that to take effect. There you go. All right, so within a screen, there are a few things that you wanna make sure are always on the top. You can have a menu, which is what I normally start with. That needs to be on top. This little debugging thing is is typically on top of the, of the uh, application header. Um, but, Whenever you add new stuff to a screen, you want to always make sure that spinner is on there and it's on the very top. So I think this create theme doesn't even have the spinner on here. So let's go ahead and add that. You guys remember what that spinner is for. If I were to toggle that, you'll see that. So if we go over to these other screens, you'll see that. And we can turn that on to let the users know that there's something going on. 
application isn't frozen. Now, when you have a little spinner screen with a test button, you need to make sure that is on top so you can click on it again to get rid of it. <laughs> All right, so we have the spinner there. Okay, let's go and get the one with the spinner. Okay, so I'm gonna click on that, I'm gonna copy. Whenever you're ready to copy and paste a little component, uh, a control or a component you want to copy and you want them on all the screens you want to take some extra time think about it think about all the different properties that you might want to change make sure everything is set up properly before you start copying and pasting to other screens because typically what will happen is you'll paste it on all the screens and then you'll be like oh I also need to change this and then you've got to go back to, to all the screens and set that up uh, and if you don't, then you've got to have some inconsistency because maybe you changed it on one screen. So unfortunately, in Power Apps, you don't have inheritance that you would have in a normal software development language like C Sharp or Java, C++. There's a lot of upsides to Power Apps. So this is just something that you uh, put up with. <laughs> All right. Also, before copying and pasting, you might actually want to give this a better name. So I'm going to say ICO debug debugging toggle. It's a good name, huh? And of course, it's going to put a number on it everywhere we go. Screen one, paste. Great theme, it's already there. New screen, paste. Spinner, screen, paste. Home screen, paste. Let's say you've got a little label and uh, there's just some more information you want to display. With something like that, I like to give it a really odd color that sort of clashes. Maybe something that sits up here. I give it a, uh, a decent border. It, you could set this up based on the location of, uh, of this icon if you want. So for example, the Y, we could GBL app settings. You can use that Y. Now, I actually want this thing to disappear. There we go. GBL show debugging. Okay, so if we run this, it disappears. Okay, so it might be a little something to uh, paste on every screen just to, you know, for the, you know, I think I'm going to delete this, go back to the screen I found this at, and for the Y, I'm sorry, for the X, I'm going to say GBL app settings. I'm going to look at the X, which is the first item there, and I'm going to subtract self dot width. I want to subtract another 10. I'm going to paste that on every screen. And that is how you set up a great debugging feature that's a great investment into the rest of your application. You build in a feature like this, it, uh, it really comes in handy. If you found anything in this video helpful, we would really appreciate you click on that like button. Are you feeling overwhelmed with Power Apps? Do you feel there's just so much to learn and you don't know where to start? Lucky for you, Darren has the solution. Discover how you can condense six months of Power App struggles in just 90 minutes. Click on the link below to learn more about Darren's Power Apps Deep Dive Masterclass.